If there's one thing that makes all the difference in the world of cartoons and animated films, it's the great characters that inhabit them. Now I'm perfect. <laughs> but did you know that some of these characters suffer from serious mental issues and you might never have realized it? You're kidding, right? Vector, a classic example of one of the most well-known characters in the world of animations, and who certainly has some mental issues, is the first enemy Gru had in Despicable Me. Vector essentially has an intense desire to be the world's greatest villain, which clearly indicates that he has obsessive-compulsive disorder to the point of copying someone else's plans, in this case, stealing the moon, and also stealing the shrink ray that Gru had stolen first. Moreover, the son of the evil bank manager believes his inventions, like the squid gun, are the best in the world, showing he has a hint of narcissism, which is the constant need to be admired and superior to everyone. And even though he is an adult over 50 years old, as we discover in Minions 2, that he is practically the same age as Gru, Vector still lives a child's life, eating junk food and playing video games when he should be working, which in his case would be committing villainous acts. This indicates that Vector also has a disorder called emotional immaturity. So, as we can see, Gru's enemy doesn't have just one, but three different types of mental disorders, which certainly isn't surprising to anyone. Elsa it's not just villains who have mental disorders in the world of animations, because even Disney's Ice Princess can be considered a character who suffers from mental disorders. In the case of the former Queen of Arendelle, her problems are very intimate, as they are strong family traumas which could cause something called post-traumatic stress disorder. The first significant moment in Elsa's life happened when she accidentally hurt her younger sister, Anna, who was saved but had her memory of the incident erased, unlike the eldest daughter of the King of Arendelle, who spent years avoiding her sister for fear of hurting her again. This shows that this moment in her childhood left marks on her mind that would only be healed many years later when her sister sacrificed herself to save her. Another incident that certainly worsened our beloved Frozen protagonist's mental instability was the early loss of her parents, who died in a shipwreck, which years later would reveal that it was an attempt to save Elsa from her magical condition that kept her insecure. This episode would cause a feeling of guilt in the character as intense as the first case, making her mind more insecure. So we can say that the sister of Queen Anna surely overcame many adversities to keep her mind in place, even with so many traumas. Dory Now let's talk about the character who was so successful in finding Nemo that she got her own movie 13 years later. When Marlin needs to find his son who got lost, he ends up meeting and befriending the good-hearted aquatic Dory, who offers to help him find the lost Nemo. But despite her goodwill, the blue fish suffers from something called short-term memory loss, or in psychology, enterograde amnesia, which is a condition that prevents a person from forming new memories but can still remember some things from the past. This leads the fish to look for her parents in finding Dory. In the film, it's clear that Dory has suffered from this small problem since birth, meaning it's something that she will have for the rest of her life. But as she is so optimistic and kind, it just becomes a detail. But yes, she still has amnesia, and that makes her so fun. I know you love to play, so check out this awesome Sonic toy for you to have fun with. Click the link in the first pinned comment and take it home. Scar If you watched The Lion King, you had the displeasure of meeting one of the worst villains Disney has ever created, Scar. Capable of planning and executing the murder of his own brother and attempting the same with his nephew by sending the hyenas to finish the job. The lion with the scar on his eye has a high capacity for deceitfulness combined with a chilling cold-bloodedness, which are the results of a mental disorder known as antisocial personality disorder. People with this condition have no respect for anything or anyone, and don't mind violating the rights of others, which aligns with strong psychopathic traits. After committing his heinous acts, the lion simply took his brother's place as if nothing had happened, showing even more of his dark and frightening side. In the upcoming live-action Mufasa movie, Disney intends to explore Scar's origin better, associating it with the emergence of his scar and a possible poisoning that not only contaminated his body, but also seems to have poisoned his spirit and soul to make him so cruel. Belle As we've already mentioned in the video, some Disney princesses also have disorders, and this is exactly the case with the protagonist of Beauty and the Beast. However, in the case of the good daughter who proposes to take her father's place and becomes a prisoner of the noble who was turned into a monster by a witch's enchantment, her problem develops after living with the person who imprisoned her. This is because Belle literally falls in love with the Beast, and the two form a couple in the happily ever after style. And this condition of falling in love with the person who keeps you captive is called Stockholm Syndrome, where captives develop very strong emotional bonds with their captors, making them feel like they never want to leave them, which basically happens with Belle, as the two get married in the end. Of course, the Beast isn't that bad, which helps a lot in their relationship. But even so, the character's diagnosis remains the same. Maybe. Mowgli Without a doubt, Mowgli is one of Disney's coolest stories. After all, who hasn't imagined being friends with a panther or a bear that loves to eat? 
However, despite being so fun, the fact that he was raised by wolves and not his real parents inevitably causes Mowgli to develop a psychological condition totally different from children who grow up with their human families, called social deprivation disorder. This condition is responsible for the problems the wolf boy has in communicating with other people. After all, he only knows the language of animals, and it's also the cause of his difficulty in living in society, like wearing human clothes and doing normal things like going to school and playing with other children. After all, Mowgli's life has always been in the jungle, not in villages or cities. Even so, I still really like the movie, even knowing that it would be right for him to live with his family if Shere Khan hadn't attacked them. And let's face it, in this case, poor Mowgli was just a victim of the situation, and he still managed to deal with it all very well. If you really love cartoons, we have some incredible news for you! We've launched a new quiz channel. In it, we'll test our knowledge about our favorite cartoons and movies like Bluey, Peppa Pig, and many others. It will be a journey full of challenges, laughter, and lots of fun with Wavy. Don't waste any time! Subscribe now at the link in the description or point your camera at the QR code on the screen and start playing. I'll see you there! Tigger. Everyone knows at least one person who is restless all the time and always wants to be doing something, just like Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. The character can bounce on his tail all the time, making it so that he is practically never still, always looking for something to do with his friends from the Pooh crew. Tigger even invents new words like hidiculous and kid kidnapped because his thoughts are so fast-paced. These are just a few examples, so it's very clear that Disney's character has Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD. This condition is certainly stronger than him and is something he was born with, which is evident when he constantly interrupts his friends and has difficulty following rules. But even so, Tigger is still my favorite character from Winnie the Pooh, even if he sometimes needs a hot cup of tea to calm down. Or maybe eat some honey with his friend. <laughs> Peter Pan Everyone who has been a child, or still is, has probably wished to never grow up and become an adult. After all, having to get up early every day to work and pay bills is necessary, but it's not exactly a dream come true, is it? So, who hasn't imagined living in a place where you never grow up, where you don't have to work or pay bills, like Neverland, cast the first stone? However, life isn't like that, and when someone who should grow up still thinks this way, that person has something called Dependent Personality Disorder, which is basically what Peter Pan has. This condition makes the fear of growing up the most important thing in a person's life, causing them to always be emotionally immature, always avoiding responsibilities, and seeking fun all the time. In fact, nowadays, in honor of Peter Pan and the Lost Boys, this disorder is known worldwide as Peter Pan Syndrome, when you want to be a child forever. That's why years later he meets Wendy as an adult with her children, and he remains just a child, which is very sad. Joker Without a doubt, if there's anyone in the world of animations who has serious mental issues, it's the Joker. Batman's main enemy since he was created, the crazy clown has been responsible for the most terrible acts in Gotham City's history, and none of this is by chance, since the villain, just like Scar mentioned earlier in the video, also suffers from antisocial personality disorder, which is responsible for his psychotic and extremely aggressive behavior. But worse than anyone, besides that, the sociopathic clown also has the characteristic of being a narcissist, which is clear from his constant need for manipulation and control, as well as his sense of superiority, evident from the lack of importance he gives to the life of anyone other than himself. Certainly, among the villains in the world of animation, the Joker is the most dangerous of all, even without superpowers, as his almost superpower is his extreme cruelty and coldness. This is what I call a sidewalk sale. Even though some animated characters have a few issues to deal with, it's still really cool to see all these characters in their movies and shows. And as a reward for making it this far, we've chosen these really great videos that are appearing on the screen for you to watch right now if you want. The one on the left is really good. If I were you, I'd definitely watch it.